Have you heard of a dragon whose tail releases a spray of explosive slime? Or a dragon that hunts with noxious fumes? Or one that vomits spires of superheated glass? Across various myths and cultures, dragons have taken on many forms, but few were more fearsome than the terrors that lurk within the pages of the Dragon Slayer Codex, a world-building project from the brilliant imagination of artist Sawyer Lee. The volume is written as a survival guide to the world's most dangerous dragons, explaining their abilities, behavior, and how to slay them if necessary. But be warned, many of these scaly tyrants will not go down without a fight. So, for this entry into the archive, we'll learn critical things about each species that can mean the difference between survival and searing flames. And as usual, you can support the artist on Patreon and follow the project using the links in the description. Now, let's dive into the burned pages and discover the secrets of the Dragon Slayer Codex. In the open plains, our first species of dragon paints the land red with their terrible wrath. The nightmarish Scarlet Lashers are a threat to anything that enters their domain. Lasher territory typically encompasses wide spaces that allow full use of their whip-like tail, which according to legend, can slice a bison in half. As elegant as they are lethal, the agile Lashers are known to move like malicious dancers. Their rust-colored eggs are a prized ingredient in alchemy and possess a unique shape to help them stay in their nest. And a Lasher's nest is a grim sight indeed. During breeding season, Lashers construct great ground nests composed of branches, bones, and strewn corpses. These disturbing corpse nests aren't just to protect eggs, but to show off the Lasher's skill to a potential mate. Throughout the mating period, the scales of male lashers will flush a deeper red than usual, and they scream a dreadful call into the night, which can be heard for several kilometers. Beyond mating calls, the multi-chambered airways within the dragon's crest amplify sound to a lethal degree. As a result, slayers are advised to shield their ears when pursuing a scarlet lasher. Yet perhaps the most terrifying feature of the Lasher is their keen intelligence. A hunting style that involves outsmarting small prey animals has resulted in an exceedingly crafty species. Should you decide to venture into a Scarlet Lasher's territory, you must constantly watch for traps, pitfalls, and other entanglements of the dragon's making. Should you survive these traps and journey to the Dark Islands just off the coast, you would face another fascinating but frightening species. One of the only known flightless dragons, the Sicklemouth are a lineage infamous for their sword-like jaws. They use these jaws to settle territorial bouts with others of their own kind, and have even been documented sparring with each other, seemingly for practice. Even by human standards, the Sicklemouth is an extremely adept swordsman. In combat, Slayers report, their attacks resemble those of trained professionals, not simply wild beasts. Many explorers have been caught off guard while charting these islands, and have met their end underestimating the Sicklemouth. These clever beasts enjoy the challenge of the hunt, so if you wish to shoo one off, it's best to make your fighting seem boring. If you must tangle with a dragon, one weapon a slayer should always have on hand is a drake prior, a kind of melee multi-tool. These versatile devices can catch a dragon off guard if wielded correctly, but since mishandling can result in the loss of a finger, they should only be used by trained professionals. When crossing the expansive sands of the Dune Sea, you and other unlucky travelers might hear a series of choir-like calls. These aren't the sounds of some lost musician, but are the deceptively melodic cries of wailing bishops, a dragon subspecies common to desert environments. Wailing bishops are famous for their silver scales, which reflect the harsh sunlight. These dragons can also vibrate their scales while in flight, creating a mesmerizing hum that adds to their chorus of sounds. Wailing bishops feed by skimming the sands of the Great Dune Sea, 
snapping up any buried subterranean life forms they come across. This sand skimming behavior is one of the most unique across the dragon family tree. The Wailing Bishop's primary food source is the water-filled, burrowing dune mole. These strange forms of life are also highly sought after by humans who live in this region as well, as they are a rare source of water in this parched wasteland. While skimming for food, Wailing Bishops also swallow excess sand. In the dragon's stomach, the sand becomes a goopy, molten material that bishops then regurgitate forming spires of black glass upon impact. The bishops use these to create formidable obsidian nests, which the dragons use as a safe place to lay their eggs. But it's not a place that's safe for anyone else. Upon the stormy shoreline where the sea clashes with the land, an unusual subspecies has become a significant threat. All slayers would be wise to be wary of the tasseled thunder maw, a semi-aquatic dragon adapted for both the sky and the sea. Rippling with muscle and deceptively flexible, the thunder maw can be found wherever the water is cold and the waves are high. The thunder maw's tail is the longest of any dragon class, which continuously writhes and coils subconsciously. Yet what is the purpose of a tail with a mind of its own? The answer might have to do with the Thunder Maw's feeding strategy. Some individuals have been seen fishing with their flexible tails, which lure in fish with their wriggling movement. A question remains, however, as to whether this is their primary hunting method or just a curious pastime. For Thunder Maws can also hunt by sending a short shock to stun their victims, before lunging in to deliver the final blow. It's a powerful secret weapon, made possible thanks to hidden organs in the head and neck region. This attribute mirrors that of electric eels, strange beasties known to use their electric fields both to subdue prey and to locate them. It is likely the Thunder Maws can use their fields to locate prey as well, which would explain how they always know when to strike. It may be best to leave these dragons to the professional slayers. When walking amongst the dense trees of a region known as the Blood Forest, a slayer should always keep one eye turned upwards, for the fast and agile gaping kiln neck soar just above the canopy, ready to snatch prey with their interlocking teeth. Kiln necks are light-bodied dragons, easily identifiable by their slim form, which is perfect for maneuvering the densely forested environments where they can be found. Their beautiful frilled tail likewise helps break the silhouette of this dragon against the foliage in the blood forest. Yet the most notable feature of the kiln neck is their sheer firepower. While kiln necks themselves aren't the largest species, their fiery breath rivals that of even the mightiest dragons. To produce such a massive wall of fire, like a common serpent, these dragons can unhinge their jaws and swing them forwards. Aside from their signature flame barrage, Kilnecks are ambush predators that hunt using their immense speed. Observant slayers have recorded them flying low over the countryside, snatching up anything from the size of a fish to the size of a cow. But even the most dangerous animal's life is more than just hunting. When rearing their young, these dragons take a break from fire breathing to carry their brood in their unhinged jaws. Juvenile kiln necks have a relatively good chance of making it to adulthood compared to other dragons, meaning the blood forest is teeming with full-grown fire breathers. Only the most courageous, or foolhardy, would venture in. On nights when the skies are darkest, slayers who wish to see the sunrise again must be on their guard. A secretive and cunning dragon subspecies prowls in the shadows. Black blister whips are so dreaded that just seeing one is considered a bad omen. Their dark scales help them vanish into the night sky. Unlike most dragons, they prefer to feed on bone marrow, and possess molar-like teeth to crack open the bones of their prey. Like bats, blister whips are known to be nocturnal only hunting at night and retreating to their dark caves when the sun rises. 
And the Blister Whip's most deadly ability is something impossible to anticipate. When a Blister Whip swings their tail, it secretes a highly flammable green slime, which the dragon then ignites, producing a sudden wall of searing flame. It's one of the most extreme attacks of any dragon. When a dragon has a slayer on the ropes, a slayer's best friend is a kinghound. These giant canines are bred to track and pursue dragons, with their calloused, hairless bodies far less flammable than an ordinary dog's. Deeply loyal, they'll bravely protect their owners against even the most fearsome of foes. Best to bring one along if you're pursuing a blister whip. In the sun-scorched wastes of a region known as the Gorge Lands, heat stroke isn't the only danger. Ruling over the labyrinthian ravines are the ill-mannered Hellbaskers, creatures just as unpleasant as the environment they inhabit. Hellbasker flames are the hottest of any dragon, and are used to bore the tunnels in which they nest. Their eggs are long and thin, able to be hidden deep inside rocky crags and crevices within the Hellbasker's territory. While the flames of adult Hellbaskers are hot enough to melt shields and swords in a flash, the flames of Hellbasker chicks aren't nearly as formidable. The size of small terriers, the sand tone wormlings are a far cry from the tyrants they grow into. When hunting, adult Hellbaskers pursue quarry into the narrowest of canyons, able to pitch and control their aerial maneuvers to the most precise degree. And such flexibility is necessary when chasing their preferred prey. Armor heads. Large, heavily defended herbivores related to wild boars, armor heads have well developed neck muscles and ever growing tusks to fend off Hellbasker attacks. The armor head's thick skin often bears the scars of attempted predation, which helps determine their status within the pack. Clearly, Slayers aren't the only group who have had some success fending off dragons. At the edge of settlements, one species is known to feast on discarded scraps. The aggressive Rattle Dreads are scavengers that seek out small towns for their trash piles. Led by the best sense of smell in the known world, they forage for anything they can fit into their huge maw. And anything the Rattle Dread doesn't eat, they regurgitate out in a fiery scattershot, with this species contributing to the highest number of dragon attacks to date. Rattle Dreads are known to incubate their eggs in their previous prey, making them a much reviled species. Once they hatch from their unwilling hosts, young Rattle Dreads grow quickly, gaining almost four times their mass and muscle in just a few months. But to reach such sizes requires a tremendous amount of food. These hungry beasts aren't afraid to enter barns and homes in search of a meal, and are completely confident around humans. You'll be warned they are coming by the rattling of their mane of hollow spikes, a sound that signals hungry mouths in the dark. And some rattle dreads have even been known to play dead in the hopes a careless human will approach. One way or another, these scavengers get their meal. Within the mossy woodland, a unique foe turns the land into a minefield. The Emerald Bombardier is a relatively small dragon with a relatively large trick up its sleeve. While perched high up in the trees, bombardiers build fortified nests of hardened saliva. Glowing chunks of this dragon stone sometimes fall to the earth and explode under enough pressure, a trait that makes bombardier saliva a highly sought after weapon of war. But bombardiers don't give up their saliva so easily, and defend their forests to the end. And there is another curious life form in these temperate forests. The Inistherium are large herbivores that tower over emerald bombardiers and show that dragons aren't the only exceptional creatures in this world. Their unique modified hooves aid them in lowering branches and in defending themselves from predators. Their hardy and self-sufficient nature means they make highly prized domesticated animals to the scattered human populations that dwell here. Upon the weathered mountains of the coast, a seldom-seen creature glides upon the thermals. 
A rare solitary species, the Vale Rite is a dragon lineage with highly unusual features. Their multiple nostrils churn out smoke wherever they go, suffocating attackers and veiling themselves in a dark cloud. Thanks to their smoking camouflage, few slayers have ever seen a Veil Rite in full. Likewise, these dragons keep their eggs in foggy, hidden nests high in the mountains. When Veil Rite chicks are first born, they latch onto their parents for warmth, clinging to their bodies for a period that can last several months. Veil Rites feed upon the poisonous vegetation that flourishes in their native habitat and these dragons are capable of isolating and weaponizing the deadly chemicals within, fusing it with their smoking shroud. Different plants have different effects, with lone wart causing temporary amnesia, dead leaf causing neural shutdown, and throat oak causing the esophagus to close. Even if a veil rite hasn't recently ingested poison, their veil of smoke is a powerful tool for distraction. Even an experienced slayer might struggle to tell where a veil rite is within their cloud, uncertainty which can often prove fatal. Many accomplished slayers have met their untimely end underestimating species like the veil rite, whose size suggests an easy mark, but whose arsenal of abilities can overpower most any foe. It's best to avoid confrontation with these dragons entirely. In the frozen wastes of the far north, the slopes echo with the call of a great behemoth. One of the heaviest dragon lineages, the Hullbreaker's physique reflects their extreme lifestyle. They have developed a novel adaptation to the harsh ice of their habitat, pummeling it into mist. With their enormous forelimbs, hullbreakers can smash through sheets of ice that sources of food swim beneath. Their eggs are kept warm in pouches beneath the dragon's wings, which reduces the risk of losing them to the surrounding ice. Once a juvenile hatches, they are dangerous even in their youth, often towering over adult slayers. Juvenile hullbreakers have been known to inhabit small, frosty ruins before striking out into the snowy wilderness. With their devastating striking ability, an adult hullbreaker is not a force to be taken lightly, as their fists can smash through more than just the ice. With such oversized forelimbs, one might assume the hullbreaker would be entirely flightless. Yet despite their weight, hullbreakers are capable of gliding short distances, with their immense punching force making for excellent launches. Just as wild and unforgiving as the snows they tread upon, hullbreakers have single-handedly caused the loss of many an aspiring crew. With all their incredible power, this is a species that only the most qualified slayers should contend with. In the highest mountains of the known world, one of the most dangerous species of all rules over the skies. An avalanche of muscle and horn, the great kinsbane has unmatched aggression and sheer strength. Most stories of castle guarding dragons are inspired by these beasts, who live wherever they please. Indeed, no human slayer has ever successfully managed to defeat one. The eggs of the Great Kinsbane are as tough as the beasts themselves, with shells that resemble balls of iron. Their hatchlings, likewise, emerge bulky and well-developed, although they need the help of a parent to break through the iron-like shell. Great Kinsbane have been known to sleep for an entire month while their eggs incubate, but even a sleeping Kinsbane can still be a serious threat to anything that creeps too close. Only a fool would test their luck around such dangerous forms of life. With all that slayers have learned about dragons, it is easy to feel that humanity should no longer cower in fear when they fly overhead. But in the case of the Great Kinsbane, a little cowering is probably a good idea. The Dragon Slayer Codex is a survival guide to a land torn between humans and dragons. Yet perhaps things won't always be this way. Within the world of the Codex, some slayers are making an effort to better coexist with these creatures, and perhaps one day form alliances with the incredible beasts. 
Sawyer Lee hopes to publish the Codex as a physical book in the future, and if that's something you're interested in, remember you can follow and support the project using the links in the description. A follow-up volume, The Drakenry, is also planned that will explore the possibility of things like dragon riding, so stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support by liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.